find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Everything is broken this week on Boss Battle. Welcome everybody to Boss Battle number 119, a show in which the writers of InsertCoinToBegin.com get together and talk about video games. I'm your host, Bobby F.J. Tom, but before we get to the nuts in this almond joy of a podcast, uh, let's find out what everybody achieved this week. Chachi, how about you? What did you achieve? I beat Call of Duty. Already? Wow. Wow. Um, I didn't even play the campaign yet. <laughs> it's not. Well, you never do. I don't... Yeah, I know. You're I'm going a hoarder. To, I'm going to this time. One what, what of these, one of these episodes is going to I be an intervention for you. <laughs> I just you have. You don't beat things. I have stacks of video games, and instead of newspapers, I have like game guides everywhere. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and they're like um, falling over. Yeah, that's so I'm picturing this. I'm things... picturing this. I'm also hoarding cats. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm in this. I don't know if you know this, Bobby, but I'm in this bad, nasty habit of beating games yeah, that I buy. <laughs> um, uh, and, wait till I tell you what I achieved this week. <laughs> uh, plus, I uh, I don't play multiplayer until I play until oh, I okay. beat uh, the story mode the because uh, on other. Other Call of Duty games, I get into this nasty habit of just uh, going completely ape shit. Yeah. On uh, <laughs> on multiplayer uh, to the point where, and I'm I'm pulling it up now, um, where it's the only thing I'll play, and I will just go and go and go. I I mean, quite frankly, here it is. Uh, anybody want to take a stab in the dark at how many hours I put into Black Ops Two? Over uh, two hundred. Sorg, I don't even want to venture a guess. Bobby, you weren't even close. Oh no! I I racked up uh, a a total of four hundred and twenty wow. hours. Wow! That's on like, Black Ops Two, and that's multiplayer. That's like many days. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. Let's get the calculator out. Let's find out. I I. Dumb. When it comes, I I don't know how to math. Yeah, I don't I don't know how to math either. That's why. That's I said pretty that. bad for my job. That's pretty bad for my job. <laughs> uh, seventeen and a half days. Wow. I put seventeen and a half days worth of time into Call of Duty Black Ops Two. Jeez. Um. Don't even have time to poop. <laughs> so yeah. No poop time. Um, it's kind of what I do when I get these games. Uh, I I rush through story mode, and then I, uh, I I move on to multiplayer and just go ape shit. So, um, and uh, it, from the from the looks of it, it's it, it'll happen on this multiplayer because I've played uh, like five games and I don't hate it. So that's good. Call of Duty uh, the Ghost I kind of forced myself to like mm -hmm. because it was yeah, the new one. And I had put over 17 days worth of time into the old one. And I'm like, oh, well, I like the old one. I can be good at this one, too. Ghost was kind of the one everybody dropped off in our group in. Yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> it's the only game that's uh, in my Xbox. It's the only game I've had out. <laughs> so. All right. Sorg, what would you achieve? Super card. That's all I can manage in my wow. oh, yeah, you stupor were the last there. week. Yeah, that's all I could get. It. That's all I could get it into. I, I jumped into some crazy taxi city rush, and um, it's not nearly as much fun without Hulk Hogan. Did they take him away? Yeah, they took his Hulk Hogan away. What? Yeah. How can they give you Hulk Hogan and take him away? They also wanted me to pay for him. So what? Screw those guys. Those Hulk Hogan. Givers. Screw them and the Canadian <laughs> Ministry on Freemium Games. <laughs> Brothers. Brothers. <laughs> All right. Uh, from the chat, let's see here. Um, Buddy Lando, uh, he played Shadows of Mordor. Is it, oh, he said that's his next name after Watch Dogs. Uh, and he beat every game he plays. <laughs> uh, Take that, Bobby. 
Yeah, I know. I don't do that. It's um, a nasty habit to get into. I mean, you go out, you spend sixty dollars on a on a game, and yeah, yeah. It, you just find yourself beating it. But, but the commercials make it to make you want to get the games, and then they're like, and you don't have time, and then the next one comes out, and you're like, oh, I gotta have that one, and then yeah. And and Wheels has been playing WWE 2K15. Oh, and crying probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, on the other hand, I achieved, uh, this week, guys, I bought an Xbox One. Um, but you didn't beat your 360 game! I didn't beat any of my 360 games. Oh, oh he's never getting to those. No, no, he's never but, getting to that copy of Halo 4 now. Hey, can I have but, a copy of Halo 4? It's still in the wrapper. <laughs> Bobby. I'll give you 20 also, bucks for Halo 4. Also, my copy of Titanfall is still in the wrapper, too. Hey, what episode is this? I'll give you $5 for Titanfall. One, 119. Uh, episode, episode tune in next week for episode 120 it's the uh bobby intervention <laughs> exactly um oh, that'll be the very special christmas I, episode I, I did i did i did cave and i got an xbox one um and i and i got took advantage of targets buy two get one free uh deal that they had as well God. um so i got uh call of duty advanced warfare uh i got uh sunset overdrive which is the most fun game on the Xbox One so far that, I, that I've played. It is a cross between Borderlands, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, and in a weird way, Bioshock Infinite. I felt like there would be a little bit of Jet Grind Radio vibe in that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there? That, there is that, cool. that too. But I, I wasn't really. I didn't play I that. Was too really, often. dude. I'm, I'm vibing on Jet Grind Radio after, after doing the but, marathon uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I've heard that everybody's like, it's like Jet, Jet Grind Radio too. But that's what I compared it to Borderlands because it's just like in your face comedy, like nonstop. Um, but it, it's a lot of fun. Um, and I uh, on on Lunchbox's uh, recommendation, I picked up Sad- Shadows of Mordor, uh, which is awesome as well. Um, I I just played a little bit of the beginning of that, but and I got the Assassin's Creed bundle, uh, Unity bundle. Uh, with Assassin's Creed and Black Flag, which I just got Black Flag for PS3, so I'll probably be taking that back. Um, but I played a little bit of Unity. Uh, it was pretty good so far, all I played of it. Um, and I downloaded a couple of the free games they had on there, Spark, uh, Project Spark, uh, Killer Instinct, which is basically a Street Fighter ripoff. Dude, I had fun playing Killer Instinct with the Microsoft Store kiosk guy. It wasn't bad. It's, it's fun. Only, it's it, fun. I mean, it's not a reason yeah. to buy an Xbox One, but I, I loved yeah. it. I liked it. it. You only get one character at a time mm-hmm. unless you pay for them. Hmm. And I got I got the one ninja dude, and he like was a carbon copy of uh, Ryu from Street Fighter. He even made the same sound effects. Like I was like, R- you didn't even try to make them different. But uh, yeah, all in all, it's it's pretty good so far. Um, the only drawback of the Xbox One is, and I've heard people say about the PS4 too, um, you have to install your games. You have to. Um, so in one day, my hard drive was at 53% <laughs> full. Wow. And it's it, a 500 gigabyte hard drive. I, I think so. this is, and this is, this is a new problem that I think a lot of people are going to be experiencing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, I don't think people will take to it very kindly. Yeah. But, but the one good thing is when you uninstall a game, it'll put it in like this little side menu that it'll say ready to install. So you can find it easily and reinstall it again. Like if you download it, I don't know about disc ones, but the download it. Like I downloaded the Forza Horizon demo and the NHL demo, and I deleted both of them, and they're on the side there, so I can access them at any time. But other other than that, it's it's really fun so far. Graphics look great. Uh, Call of Duty looks amazing on it. Um, but yeah, now I'll probably like I'll probably focus on games. But the the big game. And I know you guys are going to say something again, but I did beat the other two games on 360. I beat Dragon Age uh, Origins and I beat Dragon Age 2. I'm getting Dragon Age Inquisition tomorrow, and that's the big game. That's why I bought the Xbox One pretty much, because I wanted to play this on on the next gen. So I'll have that tomorrow, hopefully. Have fun, Bobby. Enjoy yeah. yourself. Yeah. So, all Can right, I you want to take us? Up? Oh, go ahead. Uh, at what point do we stop calling it the next gen? Yeah, it's, it's already here. Yeah, it is kind of the current gen, I guess. So, on the current gen, the former gen was the three sixty. I, I know they've been calling it. They, they call them three sixty last gen. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. So, so current gen, I guess it would be. Okay. 
So um, I actually bought a uh, Xbox Two over the week. <laughs> over the week, no, I didn't. Um, but yeah, uh, do you want to take us around the net, Chachi? No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it is time for this week's edition of video game theme things from around the internet. Net, 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 net. 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 Uh, let's start with the runners up. Uh, Mary, mysterious player shows up and wins Smash Brothers tournament, says nothing, wears a mask, and leaves. What? Uh, a, tor- uh, a tournament is, I'm sorry, Super Smash Brothers Melee tournament in Edmonton. Uh, showed up, wrote his name down as Falco Master 3000, <laughs> That's wore awesome. a mask, sunglasses, didn't say a word, won the tournament, left. You know who it was, don't you? That man was Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's a thing that happened. <laughs> uh, it, they, uh, the Reddit page did say that he politely wrapped up the controller and gently put it down after winning. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Polite. Um, but yeah, didn't say a word. Nice, nice guy, Smash Brothers player. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the thing that happened. Um, and also, runner up uh, is a 25 second video of a cat batting at the uh, cursor <laughs> icon in Destiny, trying to play yes! the game. Yes, yeah, look at him go. So look cat video for sure. <laughs> look at him go. Yes. Look at him go. He's going to go down to you. There he goes. Oh, got it. Oh, got it. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. That cat's on Knickknack or Snapchat. He's on the Yik Yik. Yik Yik. He's on the Yik Yik. All right, let's stop that. All right, yeah, please, please. please, please. uh, (laughs) In the coconut cream of this. uh, No, it was uh, Almond Joy. Why is it always food? I don't know. Because I'm a fat guy, and that's all I know. Bobby likes food. All I know is the food. All I know. In, into the hur- the eye of this hurricane. There you go. We'll oh, do that. Um, you. Jamie Colliver, a uh, YouTube user, and apparently a really big little Big Planet fan, um, I, I recreated saw. Final Fantasy VII in its entirety. In Little Big Planet? In yeah. Little Big Planet. What the heck? Um, I put in the first part 15 minutes long. Uh, if you follow it to his YouTube channel, you can see it in 15-minute intervals on his YouTube. Wow. wow. All of it. Wow. Um, everything is there. All the all the little big planets. <laughs> it, it's just uh, kind of incredible, and I'm assuming extremely time-consuming. Mm-hmm. That's like that real realistic Minecraft somebody made too. Yeah. So uh, definitely check out some of it. It's definitely it is worth worth seeing. Um, next up, and I need to do more research on this, but there's a game called Kentucky Route Zero uh, that's been released in installments, and the latest installment allows you to pick up your phone and call a, a phone inside the game. Eight six seven five three zero nine. No, it's uh, 270-301-5797, in which uh, it's narrated by William Oldman, who is a folk singer from Kentucky, who will drone on at, for at least an hour on various subjects. Wow. And if you say the right things, he will interact with you. Huh. Wasn't, wasn't there something like that with um, uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit back in the, like, on the NES? I don't remember that. I think there was a number. That we, you could yeah, call. we were talking about that during the yeah. uh, during the the, the, the marathon. Yeah, like yeah. The, you get to a certain point, you have to call a number to get like whatever password to get to the yeah. next part of the game. And now so, it's a sex hotline. And now it's a sex hotline. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you that. supposed to get the password to get to the next part of the game? Oh, well, Jessica Rabbit's still there. So, so give it to you. So give it to you. <laughs> uh, last <laughs> but not least. Mercedes Japan is back at it with its uh, Mario Kart themed oh, uh, commercials. Uh, in this 41 second commercial, Princess Peach shows up and kicks Mario's ass. Oh no! It's yeah. possible abuse. Very, very interesting live action versions. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. Like I don't even, I don't even know where to begin with this stuff. 
Yeah. Uh, Japanese car makers are just. <laughs> Well, so are American car makers. <laughs> like you, like if you look at like compared that to like used car salesmen, it, it balances out. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, they're not bad. So uh, you can check that out over at insertcointobegin.com. And this has been this week's edition of video game themed things from around the internet. Net, 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 net. Back to you, Bobby. All right, uh, before we get to our uh, things you should be made aware of, we had a couple more in the chat room of uh, achievements. Uh, Alex Cars said he uh, played Human Flappy Bird. I would not announce that to too many people. Um, and and uh, Juggler John said he's been playing uh, World of Warcraft, got back into it for the new expansion, and it wasn't an advantage of Walmart's price match. Mm. So, yeah. All right, uh uh, things you should be made aware of this week. Uh, guys, some people took advantage of Sears this week. Um, Sears had a glitch in their system. And they put up some Wii U and 3DS bundles for $60 a piece. Um, the, the, the bundles were clearly a mistake. Um, and Sears was uh, quick to correct the error. Um, but people went to stores and hope price matching with the deal. Um, and they... they they say some of them got away with it and some of them didn't. Uh, one redditor, uh, he got 3D uh, Mario 3D World uh, for two hundred and forty dollars off at Toys R Us. Um, and uh, somebody at Walmart bought three systems for that price. They Walmart price matched it since it was on the thing. Um, but yeah, I wish I would have taken advantage of that sale uh, if you could call it a sale. Um, what it do you must guys... not have been up long because I, I, I don't think it was up long. I didn't see anything on it. Yeah, I don't think it was up long. It was it was just like a quick thing, but everybody was taking their phones and they're like, "Look, look, it's on here." But I mean, well, it must have been up a little while because they had time to drive to an actual store and and get the deal. Yeah, you know? they could have screenshot it. So yeah, well, they were trying to like the 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 clerks were even looking at it and like trying to purchase the, the, the system, see if they could actually buy the system. So I don't know how long it was up or anything like that, but that's that's something if people got it for $60. Hey, Chachi, remember when, we, wasn't there like a Target thing where we were trying to do one of these? Where they had like a PlayStation 3 for like 50 bucks or something? Yeah. Yeah, but it was... Yeah, it turned out that the description uh, was enough to keep Target out of... Tr- uh, following through with the deal because it actually did um, like s- describe like one of the controllers was it yeah it, the, the description described the controller but that was the only thing in the uh the sale that described uh, um and it was like 50 bucks wow which is funny so since it, the description almost never matches yeah. when you look at any of these things so yeah of all things all right, uh, our next thing, um, guys. People are still finding Easter eggs in Arkham City three years. I read later. this. This is great. I love um, this. Yeah, if if you set your if, if you're on PC, um, or I, I don't know if it works with any of the other uh, consoles or not, but if you set your uh, clock back or your date and time back um, to December thirteenth, two thousand four, and go to talk to Calendar Man, there's a very cryptic, creepy message he says about. Um, Possibly the end of the series of games, or Batman himself. Um, it was re- it's a really cool Easter egg. Um, I suggest you check it out if you have the game. Um, I saw a video of it on YouTube. Um, and they, they said that Rocksteady actually put up the message, and they start like they kind of gave people a hint because nobody had found it yet. So I thought that was kind of cool of them to do. Um, but yeah. So, so Calen- Calendar Man's really creepy in this game, and if you go to talk to him at different uh, dates, he he's, he's, he gets even creepier. <laughs> yeah, they were saying it, he, he talks about like murders he's committed under um, like like Thanksgiving themed. If you go during Thanksgiving or something like that, yeah. like they did a, they did a really good job with Calendar Man in this game and made him an actual threat. <laughs> like he seemed really creepy. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and you also wonder, it's like, are there those out there that have said, oh, I found that, you know, mm. and maybe they, you know, they just don't, not everybody shares everything on the internet, right? Yeah. yeah. 
uh, especially something obscure like this. So but, uh, it's cool to see uh, uh, these still popping up. Makes me want to play Arkham City. Or, yeah. Or what? No, I, I, I do play Arkham City. Actually, that's the one I got to beat. Actually, uh, I thought I thought it was the uh, Origins one they were looking at. Sorg, I beat Arkham City. So Listen, I would have beat, beat Arkham Asylum if my save game didn't get erased. I beat both of them. That was fun. We're having. Um, a... didn't beat <laughs> I was going to say we're going to have a video game beat off. <laughs> what, Bobby? Oh no! That <laughs> oh, did not no. sound good. No, <laughs> let's. That not sounded better in my head let's, before it got to my mouth. Let's not name this episode that either. No, Mike. <laughs> uh, let's move. Let's move on. <laughs> um, guys, G four uh, ended uh, f- officially. It, it's going to end officially um, on November thirtieth. It's a sad day for gamers. Um, I I I loved G four when it was on the air. Um, Attack the Show was one of the best shows on on TV. I watched it. It was like my nerd news, and I watched it like. At seven o'clock every night. So uh It had its day. Uh, yeah, I, I got um, I got into it late when it was still G four before mm-hmm. it became this the before it got absorbed by tech TV. I got mad at that whole thing. Um kind of reacquainted myself with the you know, American Ninja Warrior and all that stuff. Yeah. Never really okay. got into the attack of the show kind of vibe um too much. Who, but who's gonna- it has been a whimpering, whimpering death for how many years? Yeah, yeah. Let's I, I actually, our cable uh, company pulled it in their Comcast. Yeah. So, I mean, there wasn't much going on on the channel. They were pretty much no. just showing like replays of American Ninja Warrior, Cops, uh, and uh, Web Web Soup, and all that stuff. Yeah, X- it, it, nothing I was relevant. Was it it was just it just a slow, slow death. Everybody that yeah. was ever featured on there has moved on to another project that's better than anything they did on G. Yeah. Most of them are at Nerdist, actually. They're at Nerdist, or they're on Twit. Um, yeah. They're 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 fi- they found new homes, and and the audience followed them because this yeah. audience that isn't big enough to do a cable channel is plenty big enough to support these networks, these Nerdist and Twit networks that are out there. Mm-hmm. I made a lot of friends at G Four. I, I was in their chat room uh, after Attack of the Show all the time. Um, a lot of the people that work work there, like I'm still friends with them today. I talk to them on Twitter and stuff like that. I never met them in real life, but I consider them friends. So, good good group of people, and it's kind of sad to see the network go. No, so, but, but hopefully, the better situations. Yeah, true. All right. Um, updating a story that we talked about uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, do you guys remember the guy who threatened Gabe Newell? Yeah. Uh, over over his video game being. Uh, Labeled as uh, early access title instead of a full like fully done title. Yeah. Um, the guy the guy's name was Mike Malbeck, um, and he left his company. Um, uh, Code Adv- Code Avaries. Uh, he was the co founder of that company. Um, he's back. He 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 decided not to step down. Um, he he left over the over the uh, on on a, yeah, he left the company on October 20th over the embarrassing outburst that he had uh, threatening to kill uh, Gabe Newell. Um, but he said he's back because uh, looking for a new source of income was extremely overwhelming. And when it finally came time to put pen to paper, Mike and Travis agreed the best thing to do would be to have Mike return to code av- Avarice. So basically he couldn't find a, a normal job. Um I, what do you guys think of this? Uh, do you, I, I know the game it will not be put back up on Steam. Uh, Valve has said that. So, uh, I it, uh, the game developers. Yeah. Well, see, the report I saw said that he wasn't allowed to quit. Oh, really? Um, yeah, it, it said that uh, they let him take a leave of absence, but ultimately, when it boiled down to it, he wasn't going to be allowed to leave over this. Oh, okay. Um, Contract? I, ultimately, it, the dude screwed up. He yeah, made a mistake. Yeah, I mean, and, and, um, and it's, it's going to cost him. It's kind of like out of sight, out of mind right now, too. I mean, it's been right. it's been it's been a couple weeks now, and and, and I, I don't think anybody's like holding it against them. So gamer gig too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a really really bad PR issue uh, with one of their big, potential big developer or big uh, distributors. Right. You know, that's like pissing off Walmart mm. for them. Pretty much, yeah. So, all right. Uh, now our main event. 
<laughs> uh, we're going to talk about some broken games here, guys. Um, our first game I want to talk about is um, a game called Drive Club for PS4. Uh, the, the game was so broken, they're giving away two DLC packs uh, for November that were originally planned to be premium offerings. The Ignition Expansion Pack and the Photo Finish Tour Pack will offer users a total of five new cars, 22 new tour events, 10 new livery items, I don't know what that is, and another 10 trophies to win <laughs> um, for free because their game is broken. Um, they're having a lot of like online problems with matches and stuff like that. Uh, and speaking of online matches, Halo's having a bit of problems with online matches. Mm -hmm. um, World of Warcraft has been having trouble with with uh, their 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 game their expansion pack they just released. Um, Assassin's Creed Unity, which is the big game that everybody's complaining about, it's it's a broken game. People's faces are missing in the game. Um, <laughs> Uh, following in the wake of the PC and PlayStation 4 second patch, the Xbox One received its second patch for Assassin's Creed Unity last night. Uh, the patch is meant to prevent protagonist Arno from falling through the earth and getting stuck in hay carts. <laughs> it also fixes some game crashes when joining cooperative sessions and occasionally a long delay uh, to reaching the main screen in online matches. Um, the, the, that one is exclusive to the Xbox One. Um, Ubisoft's live team continues uh, pecking away at the nearly two dozen remaining problems with their game and, and is not responding to requests from comments. Uh, that's from Polygon. Yeah, that's from Polygon. Uh, so basically Ubisoft is avoiding the situation. Uh, they're trying to handle it themselves. Uh, that brings us to our final round question. Should Ubisoft have waited to release Assassin's Creed Unity um, and should... Should they have delayed the game instead of just pushing a, one out every year? Um, I think they were going by the success of, of Black Flag because it was a really good game. But do we need an Assassin's Creed every year? Uh, Chachi, you want this one first? Yeah, Chachi, you're a I got, I got some thoughts. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. You're not getting an Assassin's Creed every year. Well, you have been. Well, you have been. <laughs> no. You've been getting, up until now, the mm -hmm. past two years, you've been getting expansion packs. Okay. In between the yeah. numbered ones. Okay. I guess Only so. recently have they been giving us uh, Assassin's Creed games every year. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the thing. Ultimately, it comes down to how much it's going to cost them. Uh, all the advertising and everything they had said or had done had a particular date on it. If they don't release on that date, that all that money might as well be thrown away. Okay. Um, because you run the risk of uh, people not buying the game and for, or forgetting about the game. If you're like, Oh, sorry guys, we're going to push this back at like a month. Yeah. But uh, other, but, other companies do push their games back. Like uh, WWE 2K14 was supposed to come out, and they're even having trouble with their game too. Um, but they they delayed their game a bit. Um, a couple other companies delayed their games into next year. Um, oh, what was it? I can't remember which one offhand now. But um, if it's good for other companies, why why can't like uh, Ubisoft do this with Assassin's Creed to make a better game instead of just throwing everything out there, just like throwing it at a wall to see if it sticks. Ubisoft made Watch Dogs, correct? Yeah. They delayed that game a year and it cost them a lot. Man, that is, that is true. Um, they've already delayed a game recently. They learned their lesson not to delay a game. It is better to ask for forgiveness than permission sometimes. Or not comment on it at all. Right. Well, I mean, of course, what are they going to say? Oops. Yeah. Les oops. And also, oops. I, I mean, it, it, another thing that would have fixed all of this mm -hmm. is more beta testing. Yeah. But you can only do so much in so, in, in so little time. You have a deadline. Mm -hmm. You have a budget. When you hit that deadline and budget, sometimes the time is up. I, I, I mean, ultimately, that's not ultimately, but I mean, I, that's what it boils down to most of the time. Mm -hmm. 
Um, no, games like uh, War World of Warcraft, those games always have trouble when they come out because there's no real way to show or to uh, test what it's going to be like when it's released. Yeah. I, I mean, you can have you you can have a department of twenty beta testers playing the crap out of it, but that game is huge, mm-hmm. and you know you're not going to know what it's going to do. In, yeah. in different environments. Yeah, you're not so, going to I mean, you're not going to catch every glitch. Right. And I mean and uh what was the other one? Drive Club with the matchmaking. Yeah. Um you you're not going to know until you release because you need to essentially what you need to do is you need to put those games to the ultimate test. They actually apologize for their poor game. <laughs> well, it, and I mean there's no way you're going to know how the game is going to react to a set number of or to a, a a large number of players, because mm-hmm. I mean, something could work perfectly fine in a small group. What one 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 funny thing about Assassin's Creed Unity's uh, quality control? Um, there is a picture online of of the the credits for Assassin's Creed Unity, and quality control was spelled wrong. <laughs> In the in the credits, it was spelled wrong. So I mean, that's that's one funny thing that happened. But <laughs> it's like the quality control guy didn't spell his title correctly. Well, uh, and also I, I I think you know I th- I think Chachi's right there where it's a uh, there's too many unknowns, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I agree. There's with that. there's too many unknowns, especially when we add in uh, things like multiplayer, things like like you know, you're going to have all this DLC and all these other issues, matchmaking. Um, mm-hmm. But also even, even for, cause it sounds like in a lot of cases uh, issues with Assassin's Creed are issues in the single player game. Mm-hmm. Um, now, when we move to this idea and y- you saw this and I knew it was going to come, I knew it was going to come that our console games are precisely like our PC games mm-hmm. in that they don't need to be finished when they ship. What goes out on that disc does not need to be pristine it. because there's patches. Welcome mm-hmm. to welcome to the patch world in console gaming. And I think people have um, gone, you know, pe- people have, I think, adapted to it pretty well. So everybody's really dealing with the same problems that the PC gamers were 10 years ago when it comes to their multiplayer games and their patches and and um, and save game issues and, and, and things like that. Uh, this is nothing new. And mm-hmm. it's not something that's going to go away. And as you have these product cycles, um, and whether they're expansion packs or not, uh, in the case of Assassin's Creed, they're still putting out Assassin's Creed game every year. They still have a, a team that needs to put together all these assets and put out something that looks like a game by itself for every different year. Teams. Uh, okay, for, sure, sure. I, I, I'll give teams. you, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. And same with Call, they- and same with Call of Duty. Right, and, and, and it's we... all it's all different teams. So yeah. I mean, yes, it, it, technically they are putting out an Assassin's Creed game every year. It is, and that's staggered. It's not that they're like they're going from uh, we finished Assassin's Creed four, let's go do five. It, it, right. it, it I mean, it, as opposed to like a WWE two K fourteen to two K fifteen. And technically, they had two to put out this year because they had Rogue on. Xbox mm-hmm. 360 and PS3, and they had Unity on PS4. Yeah, and, and it's multiple and teams, and Ubisoft is a mm-hmm. Goliath of of game teams. Um, yeah. And uh, I think um, I think that size is mm-hmm. a problem with it. I mean, because either way, they've had three to four years on each game, regardless, right? Yeah. right? Well, what it looks like, right? Um, so, but still. Things happen in that production cycle. Um, and again, they can say, well, uh, hey, what do we always say in video? We'll fix it on post, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, now they're able well, to say that with about everybody. Here's, let me just add something really quick uh, from experience. I'm in IT. Mm-hmm. We have 1,200 machines. When we push out a complete new system, and roll it out to all 1,200 machines, we hope that 60% of them work. We hope. <laughs> like, we don't. We know for a fact that when we push this out, despite all of the testing that we've done on the 10, 15 machines that we, that we use for testing, 
it works fine. When we push it out on a global scale, we wish and pray that it comes out right on 60%. Yeah. Because that's all you can ask for. You cannot do something on this global scale with online servers impacting everything and get 100%. It's not going to happen. There's always going to be a set of circumstances where 20 to 40% of this is completely far. So at a certain point, you it doesn't pay off to be the day zero Call of Duty player. Not yeah. at all. Like, no, like, I mean... Like, yeah, it sorry, pays off ahead. more to, 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 to be the, ah, oh, wait a week. Yeah, or, you, basically, day one guys are the beta testers. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, and yeah. Unfortunately, that's all you're going to get on console. Yeah. You're going to get the uh, the couple million people that go out and get a day of launch and then go on the internet and complain that something's broken. Meanwhile, I waited a week and a half and had 50 megabytes worth of updates when I put it in my machine. And everything works great. <laughs> Thank you, day ones. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, you for you per- do- thank you for purchasing the giant BS Day Zero pack to beta test that yeah. for me. Well, and that's the thing. Two weeks, I, I bought it two weeks after it came out. Guess what edition I got? Day one edition. Day one edition. <laughs> that's what I got. The, uh, the exchange always pre-orders a shit ton of them. I got the day one edition of Sunset Overdrive, too. Right. <laughs> I, I mean... I, I don't need to pre-order a day one edition of anything because chances are a week later when I go to the exchange to get it, I'm getting it with all of the bonuses. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. All right. Good hockey talk, guys. <laughs> um, before uh, we go, okay. was that it? Are we done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead. Um, I, I wanted to share a, a story in which I'm not allowed to give out many details. Okay. Um, I, I've been sharing this with Sork, um, about a month ago or no, two to four weeks ago in, uh, a video game thing, theme things, I mentioned the game by a particular group, um, of, again, can't say the name. Uh, we tore it up, uh, made a whole bunch of jokes. And uh, it made me realize that I wanted to essentially review this game. Um, The problem is, had I gone out myself and gotten the game, it would have added me to a whole bunch of organizations list. Um, Most of the organizations have three letters, and I would have potentially gotten in a lot of trouble. Um, Someone very close to me is going into the field and has a lot of professors who worked in, who worked in three-letter organizations. So I had them talk to them. And here's the list of reasons why I'm not allowed to review that game. Uh, he said, first off, I was correct, I would be on a bunch of watch lists. Not just our watch list, their watch list as well. Um, I could be accused and tried for, for uh, providing support to this organization. Wow. Um, We're if talking, I, talking about Goat Simulator, right? Yeah. Um, If I wrote a favorable review, I could attract the wrong people to the site uh, and even help them with recruiting. Wow. If I wrote a negative review, I could attract could attract attention from them and Mm -hmm. potentially end up on a list in which doesn't bode very well for me. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, uh, I won't be reviewing that game. I took the uh, the research to the limit, and no matter which way I go, it's bad. Push it to the limit. I like living too much, guys. That's essentially what it boils down to. I just picture Chachi in the uh, uh, the <laughs> the uh, Scarface. Push it to the limit. The montage. <laughs> Counting money. No, I know. Different different organization. <laughs> Me hiding in a cave is what yeah, it pretty is. much, pretty much. Bobby, what the hell are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking he about? Said, he said, "Push it to the limit." It made me think of the Scarface montage. Bobby, no. 
<laughs> All right, that's gonna do it for us this week, guys. Uh, Thank you can God. Follow us. What? Thank God. <laughs> you can follow us on at Insert Coin TV. You can visit us at InsertCoinToBegin.com. New articles going up daily, and you can join us live each and every Tuesday night at eight o'clock on Live.SorgatronMedia.com. For at Sorgatron, uh, special thanks to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR for uh, helping us with the notes and tweets all night. Um, for at Sorgatron at Chachi says I'm at Bobby FJ Town. Game over. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.